Hello and welcome back to Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader. In the last episode, we finished recruiting Cassia, our navigator. We now have to. We have additional missions to get, and a tech priest for our engines. Uh, find that Inquisitor and recruit some crews. But before we do that, let's maybe talk to Cassia first. Words cannot describe how boring the bridge is without our stimulating conversations. I am a part of House Orcelio, an ancient dynasty of the Navis Nobility. Since time immemorial, our family has served to advance knowledge, pushing at the boundaries of the Dark Unknown. The Starway Atlas contains 2,843 routes that chart the sectors of the Segmentum Obscurus and reach all the way from the Coronas Expanse to Holy Terror. And uniting the Imperium's thousands of worlds. House Orcelio is bound by commercial pacts to houses Galeatis, Ortina, Drotus, and... There is a dark blue knot tightening on your neck, Lord Captain. I can see my reply is not satisfying your thirst for knowledge. What is it you desire to hear, exactly? You wish to know about me? I suppose I can help you with that. What would you like to know? Hardly. According to the Chronicles of the House, I was born on one of the Orcelio worlds. Vert... Vert... Oh, what was it? Please forgive me, Lord Captain. My childhood memories are too vague. Sometimes I dream about the colorful birds that built their nests in the garden, or the servants dressed in purple livery, or the blue fog that rolled over the lowlands behind the palace. But everything is covered in a rosy haze. Perhaps it is my imagination, not my memory, that is painting these pictures. My stay on the station was wholly dedicated to preparing me for my future duty. Astromancy, astrography, numerology, the histories of my house and the Imperium, as well as other disciplines. For many years, dozens of instructors tirelessly prepared me for my destiny. And once a year, Great Regent Alronto would come to the station. He would entrust his beautiful vessel to my command, so that I could master the practical aspects of our art as well. The Regent gave me a bird from a sunlit planet once. I tried to befriend it and make it sing, but for some reason it refused and died soon after. The instructors were too respectful of my duty to my house to waste precious time on idle chatter. Aside from them, there were only servants on the station, and you know they have their vocal cords removed, so they cannot break their vow of silence. And since the subject has been breached, Lord Captain, why do you not follow this honor tradition? Your decks are so garish. Uh, apologies, I meant noisy. The rabble don't just chatter. Sometimes they shout and even sing. Why do you allow such a lack of restraint? Rogue traders are highborn, are they not? Not every noble is like that. blasphemous. If a ruler's duty dictates the need for violence, would dispensing it not be their responsibility? I will contemplate your answer in solitude. The navigator's open eye is baneful to whoever the warp's ruinous shine falls upon, and therefore it is the symbol of our power. We are the guiding stars of humanity, found worthy of an uncommon gift and one of the duties that we bear is to guard our eye, even from wayward glances that may bear evil. Besides, I am aware that lesser servants of the Imperium may find our appearance repulsive. 
The Navigator gene twists the features the rabble are used to seeing, and the magnificence of our role cannot be grasped by their feeble minds. <laughs> uh. Both options are. Uh. Perhaps my appearance does not terrify you right now, but this will not always be so. The navigator gene is unstable. My body is going to change over time. And only the god emperor knows exactly how. It may be difficult to describe. You see, every navigator perceives the warp differently. My mentor, Great Regent Elronto, always described his travels through the Immaterium as a journey through a vast wood with countless paths. And I, assisting him in the first voyages, futilely tried to follow his example. But the wood would not reveal itself to me. But everything changed when I found my own key to this mystery. You see, I've always brightened up my rare moments of leisure time by painting. You may recall there was a workshop in my chambers. As soon as I imagined the warp as a blank canvas, an indescribable feeling came over me. I moved the brush, going deeper and deeper into my own painting. Visions were hidden within the vibrant colors of my palette and something inside me knew which should be brought out and which should be left behind. I woke up several days later, after the voyage was safely complete. The Emperor graced me with a gift. I can see inner life in addition to the mundane. You cannot know that a fruit has rotten from the inside until a blade slices it in two. I can see the rot from far away. It roils like swamp mud, oozing through the bright peel. Anger and boredom, sadness and joy. Everything that people shut away inside themselves is revealed to me like colors on the canvas of my world. You will hear no objection from me, Lord Captain. As the only voice of our family on this vessel, it is an honor. As long as your questions are courteous, I will answer every one of them. Oh, yes. The navigators of the house came to the Coronas Expanse fairly recently, a mere 208 years ago. Before that, our ancestors expanded the borders of humankind's dominion for the glory of the Emperor, blazing trails to different corners of the galaxy. Just as a rogue trader stands at the head of a protectorate, a Novator heads a Navigator House. It is the Novator who decides where to look for alliances and which path their bloodline is destined to tread. As for our house... A transfer of power to a successor is currently underway. In the meantime, Great Regent Alronto Orcelio is ensuring the stability of the house. So, says Regent Alronto. Nothing is decided yet. Some people in the house become enshrouded in rolling grey clouds at the thought of me becoming the Novator. But even more are bound with dull leaden chains. They think I am not ready for such a burden. By all means. Sister Argenta shines like a guiding star, inspiring resolve in those around her, seemingly inexplicably. However, I see a dark and ugly fog billow behind her, contrasting sharply with her shining light. It burdens the Sister of Battle. It drags her down. Yet Argenta herself is hardly aware of it. Seneschal Viserion is among the few whose colors are a pleasure to look at. Whenever the Seneschal speaks, heavenly crystal clarity spreads around him. And whenever he is angered, dark blue clouds condense over him. And in his rare moments of joy, a pure gleam of sunset pink caresses the souls of those near him. Out of your entire retinue, Lord Captain, 
He is the only one I would trust with my life. Adira's emotions are like a maelstrom. Bright, unbridled, enveloping her form like a wondrous kaleidoscope of colors. And as dangerous as a twisting warp storm. The riot of colors hides the truth from my eyes. What exactly is driving this woman? Is it her own will, or... Or is it the Immaterium, Lord Captain? I have enjoyed your company. Thank you for the conversation. And who are you? No one. Her servant. Greetings. Yeah, I have nothing to say, so that means no one has anything to say. So let's go. Explore the unknown. We are here, there's nothing else. Let's try going here, scan everything. Lord Captain, my apologies. I... I did not notice your entrance. Oh, this. <laughs> I found this fascinating reed on one of the shelves. And I must say, it has caught my eye. Its every chapter is written in verse. I find it so beautiful and... Enrapturing. Urak V had a vast archive of its own, of course. Although most of the works within had to do with scholarly disciplines of some sort or another. Only in my sparse moments of respite was I allowed to escape into the pages of more embellished works. One should not underestimate the navigators of House Orcelio, Lord Captain. Like a shawl of pale smoke, a faint malaise hangs upon my shoulders, but it will not be the slightest hindrance to my duty to humanity, and my duty to you. Your servants are somewhat sluggish when it comes to attending a noblewoman of the Navis Nobilite, but they are quite tolerable. Thank you for your concern. Figure this much. There are people on this ship who are far more impulsive and dangerous to others, and far less devoted to the God Emperor than a herald of the Navis Nobilite. <laughs> but I did not need your words to see the shades of umber unease that whirl around your subjects whenever I am near. Were I not acquainted with such a reaction, I could have found their behavior in your question just now insulting. Lord Captain, would you kindly explain to me why you are pestering me with these questions? Inquiring about my mood and my needs, showing an interest in the books I am enjoying? You are behaving as if you possessed a shred of fellow feeling for one such as I. I... Beg your pardon, Lord Captain. That was no way for a navigator to conduct herself. <laughs> That's probably a romance option. Please forgive me. 
I cannot even understand myself right now. Your words and attention have reminded me of life on the station. Of Theobald and Felek. I do not understand. They were merely the keepers of Urak V. So, why do memories of those two make me feel a strange heaviness here? At the same time, I find myself overwhelmed with new excitement and anticipation. At last, I have set foot outside my familiar walls and into a world that I have only seen before in the pages of books. Your ship alone is a treasure trove of remarkable artifacts and curiosities. And just imagine the things that await beyond, but... My delight must seem childish to you, surely. In your heart, you must be finding all this quite amusing. Mm. No. Indeed. I... I did not know. That is to say, I could not have known, as it is the first time we are speaking in a circumstance so... private. My word, when I found this place, it was so full of officers. Why did they all leave? Or... because my presence offends them. Then I must take my leave as well. I am due to inspect the Sanctum Navis after the Communion Ritual, and prepare the chamber for the upcoming warp jump. Thank you for your company. Alright, I think that went rather well. I didn't want to start a romance with her. Yet, I'm not sure if there is an option for that. If someone lands,
Alright, we will see the problem. Uh, a big problem, a small problem, a big problem, and a big problem. Investigate it. I think it's uh, behavior. It's I'll lay claim to the stars.
Follow my lead. Squad and what I hear is the team is people.
I believe them. We can look here. So I won't control. tolerate weakness. And on the level. I believe it's quite quickly now. So let's level up. Okay. That's nice.
You know what, I will do it offline, uh, there's probably a lot of thinking for me, I, st I still don't, did not list that uh, upgrade, so I'll be right back. Okay, so yeah, I've chosen for myself Air of Authority and get in the cover. <coughs> uh, when I'm using Brace for Impact and probably I should be near uh, Cassia, so she gets extra turn to move and of course that will increase her uh, willpower uh, she is not important I will not be using her anymore for Cassia it's um, waking nightmare as a skill that will remove practically everything from the enemies will point toughness and in this case also hit points and I have Oblivion, that will also reduce their dodge chance and hit chance. Her perception will be, of course, later increase and the power will go skyrocket. Complement that uh, for Idira, she gets sensor deprivation once uh, Cassia will do her uh, waking nightmare. The, Sensor deprivation will just have practically no obstructions to succeed. And as her second talent, it's lore warp. There wasn't any good thing. She won't be using any logic and technical use. It will probably be that and tech priest and everything else. It's just redundant, redundant because probably awareness and or the lore will be. Uh, done by Cassia, just think. For um, Argenta, it's agility increase and ready to serve, just to have better resolve. For uh, <coughs> Abelard, it's also agility increase and stronger together. Everyone will get plus 5 toughness because that's his uh, humanity's finest uh, skill, talent uh, so yeah, every, everyone will get more HP and for our secondary temporary merc she also got the same skills as I do but once we have that 6, six member she'll probably be off our squad so, let's continue. We have that reason to visit.
She's not right there. It sounds like heresy. So the Inquisitor probably is not here. It's about time. Sins hidden in the heart fall to decay. A bug? Was... Challenge for me. Halt, I notice something. Sister Argenta, you are always shrouded in a greenish gray mist when I see you. Is it me that troubles you? Or is it whatever I can see behind it? My soul is open to the light and his faithful servants. The rest is merely fleeting frailties that hold no significance. Claim to the stars. Take a knee and bow before me. You ask for it. Okay, okay. I'm surprised. But that doesn't matter. So, you cannot do anything right now. Battlefields are always drowned in scarlet. 
Oh, I'm a lord. Not a servitor. Let's charge. Victory is imminent. Oh, come on. It will be done. Make it happen. I will do my part of care of this one. That's not the Seneschal's job. This I will hit you, but if I hit you, I will not hit you, right? Seventy-three, right? Seventy-six. But wait, you're not an enemy. Yes, you are, but I guess I don't see you. Commands, I act. God Emperor, move through me. Be the fire in my heart. Much dodge, super dodgy. I'll do it. Faith without deeds is worse. <laughs> Okay, 
how does this work? Give me strength. Huh. So they put us. And yeah. This one's me? If you insist, Lord Captain. It will be done. That's very bad positioning. Done. Rejoice in battle. I've seen worse battles than this in my time. Suits my purposes. Nothing I can't do. At your beck and call. I will do my duty. Oh, you. All too easy. I don't need luck. I have strategy. I'll see to it, personally. Who, if not me? Indeed. Victory oh. is imminent. Ah! <sighs> 69% to hit. It will be done. I will do my duty. At your back and call. I'd rather not. Was that you, or...? What, of course! No! These groupy flashes are choking me!
Los. for the week. You're dodging way too much. Yeah. As the Emperor commands, I act. <laughs> Grey hair? Sure hair. your back and call. I shall not fear. Already done. Nothing of value has been lost. My place is at the fall. I will do my duty. Victory is imminent. There is movement in the Empyrean. Watch this. We'll do. I will bathe this battlefield in righteous fury. Faith without deeds is worthless. of the Emperor will be undone. I'll do it. And that nimbleness for him is quite powerful. Navigator is coming. If I may. I'm not accustomed to being around. Oh. I don't believe. Showed you will be hit. No, 
or I may be wrong. Not my specialty. Absolutely not. Suits my purposes. It doesn't matter. I'll see to it personally. I'll make it happen. Oh no, I was too blind. At your beck and call. I took care of this one. Indeed. I could see the golden light of the Astronomicon as you see it, Cassia. I would probably go still forever, unable to take my eyes off the radiance of the Emperor for an instant. I think you would manage. You have different hues of light within you. Gold, silver, and crimson. One of them would call you back to this world. grenade and we'll pack everything I don't want for now reducing my dodge and that battle took me off guard as well victory awaits currently heavily wounded I think we'll finish for today. A little, um, less intensive episode. Uh, but thank you for watching and see you in the next one.